OK, here we go. What is going on? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is it my imagination or has everything gone completely crazy at the moment? Welcome, everyone. Here we go again. Yes, it's English Addict, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Live from the birthplace of England or English, should I say, which is England. <laughs> you know what? I think I might just go back to bed. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope you are happy. <laughs> I really do hope you are happy. I need your warm smiles today. I want to feel your warmth through my computer screen <laughs> and you can have mine in return if you want. So I hope you're feeling good. Here we are. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know where to begin. I really don't. The last few days have been rather challenging and it looks as if the next few days are also going to be rather challenging, depending on where you are in the world more of that later on oh my goodness well at least we've made it to the end of another week and also the end of another weekend and <laughs> the beginning of a new month yes not only is it the first of november it's also sunday <laughs> No captions, no captions, 
before anyone says mr. Duncan there are no captions there are no captions I'm afraid I'm sorry about that I don't know what's going on I've noticed today that YouTube YouTube has a few problems you may have noticed that there is no thumbnail on my live stream now there is one but unfortunately there is a technical fault with YouTube at the moment and no one can put their thumbnails the little picture advertising their live stream they can't put it onto their live stream I don't know why very strange now I have two theories <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist by the way I'm not one of those people that believes in all of the conspiracies that are around about everything so I'm not one of those people however I think there might be two reasons why the thumbnails are not showing maybe there is a technical problem or perhaps it's censorship perhaps YouTube are a little bit worried about what people are going to be doing with their live streams over the next few hours because of course we have the election taking place in the United States and I think it might be connected to that I'm not I'm not saying it is before anyone quotes me I don't want to find myself being discussed or talked about on Twitter oh I can't believe Mr Duncan said that about YouTube oh what a terrible man please don't do that that isn't what I mean but it is strange how no one can actually put their thumbnail on their live stream it's very strange very very strange indeed mm, something might be going on there anyway here we are nice to see you here it's English addict by the way <laughs> normally we start at two o'clock but as you can see today we are a little bit late I've had a busy week went to the hospital last week had a very major checkup I had some exploratory examinations done on my body somewhere around here <laughs> it was very uncomfortable and not very pleasant whatsoever I will be talking about that later on as you know as you know if you are a regular viewer you will know that I love sharing all of my little moments of my life I know it's not very special my life is just a small life short brief but I'm trying to do something with it and I hope you are as well something useful maybe here we go then nice to see you here today we're talking about words connected to elections as I mentioned there is a certain election taking place that everyone seems to to have become quite obsessed with to be honest and also we will be talking about scary words some words that are used to describe scary things but can be used in other ways as well as idioms and expressions so we will be doing that later on and we have the sentence game yes we will be playing the sentence game later on I hope you are feeling good today if you haven't heard the news and this is one of the reasons why I was feeling slightly annoyed this morning it looks as if the United Kingdom well at least England you see a lot of people forget that England is part of the United Kingdom so the United Kingdom is everything including Scotland Wales Northern Ireland and England however England quite often will have its own rules and laws and we are going once more into lockdown complete lockdown across the country from next Thursday it was announced last night by the government so it looks as if we're going to do this all over again can you believe it I can't believe that we are going to have to go through all this again the only slight difference this time will be that the schools and the universities are going to stay open however any everything else will be just like last time people are being told to stay at home the uh, many 
restaurants. In fact, I think all of the restaurants, all of the bars, all of the theatres will close again. <sighs> so now we have the situation that we had earlier this year. It's happening all over again. I am having a very strange feeling of deja vu. Have you heard of that? Is that, is that, is that a word? Yes, it is a word. Deja vu. If you have deja vu, it means you are experiencing or you have the sensation of experiencing the same thing again. Something has already been lived or something feels as if it's already occurred. You are doing it again. Deja vu. It comes from the French language, you see. Deja vu, the feeling of doing something that you've done in the past, a repeat of something, the sensation of doing something again, already felt or already done, I believe is the translation of that word. So that's what we're doing today. We have a very interesting few days ahead of us as we prepare to go once more into lockdown here in England. Can you believe it? Oh, hello, live chat. Nice to see you here as well. Hello to the live chat. Nice to see you here. And I'm very sorry for being late today. But YouTube is having some very strange moments. I don't know what the reason is, but there are some very strange things happening at the moment. Technical things. Oh. Yes, we had some sad news yesterday. Uh, the first person to play James Bond, Sean Connery, sadly died yesterday at the age of 90, played 007 seven times. But now he's not 007, he is 00 heaven. I'm sure I'm not the first person to do that one. Christina! Don't worry, everything will be all right. I know it's all right. I'm sure everything will be fine in the future. I am often optimistic about these things, so I'm not too worried. But I must be honest with you. A lot of people are now panicking. Already people have gone a little bit crazy. So this morning, uh, our local news reported that this morning people have gone crazy once again, they are rushing around the supermarkets. Yes, panic buying has returned to England. So apparently this morning, people were queuing up outside the supermarkets. Hundreds of people lining up outside the supermarkets, waiting to go in and buy all of their, uh, their goods and their groceries toilet paper, things like that. So even though we were advised yesterday not to panic buy, people, of course, are doing it. <laughs> so that's one of the things that is happening right now. It is breaking news from England. <laughs> people are going crazy. <laughs> Already they are rushing to the supermarkets and buying the food as if there's no tomorrow. But there will be a tomorrow. Don't worry, everyone. Calm down. Don't buy too much because you'll be taking it away from other people, you see. Mr. Steve will be here in a moment. Oh, yes, we have the live chat. I wonder who was first on today's live chat. Shall we have a look? OK, then let's do that right now. I wonder who was first. Mosen. Hello, Mosen. Nice to see you here. You were first. We also have Bella, Malia. Also, who else is here today on the live chat? I'm just trying to have a look here because sometimes I get different names, you see, coming up. Oh, I see. Yes, Mosen. Also, Bella. Congratulations to you. You are live right now and you are first on today's live chat. Yeah. 
I suppose the big question is will I be doing special live streams once England goes into lockdown by the way it is going to happen over four weeks four weeks of lockdown here in England is about to begin next Thursday it will start so <sighs> here we go again as they say so that's happening and also uh, I suppose last time because if you remember the last time when we were all in lockdown I actually did some special live streams so I'm not sure what to do at the moment I haven't decided <laughs> I'm still in shock to be honest because yesterday it was announced people were expecting something to be announced but we didn't know what it was but apparently we yes we are going back into lockdown again from next Thursday and it will take place until the 2nd of December we will all have to hide in our houses again hello everyone yes nice to see you here lots of people on the live chat hello also to Pedro oh Pedro Belmont is here today thank you Pedro Pedro is one of the moderators making sure that everything here is lovely and nice if you are a friendly person who likes other people if you are a peaceful person who loves to smile and always looks on the bright side of life then you are more than welcome to join us here today we also have Tomic hello Tomic nice to see you as well also we have oh hello there Ricky Ricky Sidhu nice to see you here today deja vu is a feeling yes it is it is a very strange feeling when you feel as if you've done something before something that happened something that feels very real and you feel as if you've done it before do you ever get deja vu do you ever have that experience of feeling as if <laughs> you've done the same thing before well guess what next week we will definitely be having we will be having deja vu next Thursday because we are going into lockdown again Zainab hello Zainab nice to see you here the view behind you is nice thank you very much I wish I could say the same thing about the view outside because <laughs> outside at the moment it's looking very gray outside the window so there it is a live view outside the window however yesterday we had we had a lot of sunshine yesterday so I decided to do a little bit of filming yesterday some of the autumnal sights so I think it would be very nice to have a look at those right now would you like to have a look at them okay then let's do it so yes autumn has arrived and yes you can see the yellow of the leaves these are some of the leaves that have fallen in the garden at the back of my house and everything was looking rather nice even though we are having some strong winds at the moment some stormy weather apparently it is the the tail end of a tropical storm so there you can see the views yesterday looking very autumnal you can see many of the trees now are definitely turning some of them are turning yellow some of them are turning red but there it is the view yesterday looking out from my studio window rather nice much better than today to be honest and yes we can't talk about autumn without having some of that beautiful autumn color look at that isn't that nice you can see it's very windy it was yesterday quite windy and yesterday we went into town mr steve and myself we went into town to do a little bit of shopping not much so don't worry before anyone says we weren't panic buying and there once again you can see some of the beautiful colors of autumn 
which is now taking place here in England. <laughs> I have a strange feeling that I will be doing a lot of autumn watching over the next few days. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you why. And finally, yes, isn't that beautiful? Oh, my goodness, I feel better already. I was feeling a little bit upset and down at the start of today's live stream, but now I feel great because I'm looking out at these lovely autumnal shots. Thank you very much for your lovely messages. Oh, hello, Rosa. Nice to see you here, Rosa. Luis Mendez. Oh, there I am. Look, so there's me in the garden yesterday looking out and oh look at that if you look very closely you can see there are people walking across the Rekin here in Shropshire if you look very closely you can see some people walking across so that is the very famous hill that is not very far away from where I live it's called the Rekin here it is right now <laughs> so that's what it looks like normally and there were lots of people yesterday up on top of the hill enjoying the sights and maybe enjoying some of the sounds as well as the wind was blowing into their ears oh hello there <laughs> nice to see you here hello to caprian caprian nice to see you Mr. Duncan, I'd like to see you again with your whole new appearance. Oh, I see. Are you talking about my beard? Well, yes, I, I have been growing a beard over the past few days. However, do you want to know why I grew my beard? Because over the past few days, I've been filming a new lesson. Did you see it? I posted it on my YouTube channel on Friday all about Halloween. So there is a new lesson where I talk about the festival of Halloween. I know not many people celebrate it. Maybe where you are, you don't celebrate Halloween. In fact, last night, which was Halloween, no one was celebrating it. Everyone was staying indoors. They were all staying in the house. They were all quite shocked, to be honest. Thank you, Christina. Beautiful autumnal scenery. Yes beautiful very nice it's a wonderful place mr duncan thank you very much that's very kind of you to say sergio oh hello sergio as they say have a little bit of the hair of the dog now i feel that i need a little bit of mr duncan's beard oh i see <laughs> i'm not sure what you mean by that i'm quite intrigued hair of the dog if you have the hair of the dog it means you take a little bit of the thing that was making you feel unwell. Maybe I, su I suppose a good example is if you go out for a wild night, maybe you go to the pub or the bar and you have lots to drink. But the next morning you feel terrible. You feel drunk and hung over. You have a headache. Some people say that you should drink a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> to chase it away. Some people say that you sh should have the hair of the dog. The thing that caused you the problem can also be the cure. I'm not sure how true that is, to be honest. Hello to Duck Dip Tri Vo. Hello to you. Hello, Mr. Duncan. What is your normal speech rate in casual communication? <laughs> is it as slow as when you go live? This is how I normally speak. <laughs> a lot of people think that I'm somehow going slowly, but I'm not. This is how I normally speak in real life. So when I'm walking around the streets, when I'm saying hello to people, this is how I normally speak. You see, not everyone speaks like that. Many people also speak clearly, steadily and also it is better to be understood. It is better to be understood. I think so. Hello to Tu Goku. Hello to Tu Goku. <laughs> Marietta says 
<laughs> the beard suits you it makes you look even more interesting as it does with my husband oh i see your husband also has a beard i see interesting saturino hello saturino nice to see you on the live chat yes we do have things to talk about it isn't just me talking into the camera there is also other things going on today oh by the way my lovely socks would you like to see my socks today here here they are <laughs> so these are the socks that i'm wearing and yes they are very colorful now i had to be careful you see because there is a, an election taking place soon i had to be careful what color i used or or the, the colors that i have on my socks so there you can see that there is no favoritism there is lots of different colors yellow black red blue purple so i i think i've been very fair there with my choice of socks so you could you could not get any <laughs> possible favoritism i have been very impartial with my choice of sock color i think so so it's coming very soon yes mr mr steve will be here a lot of people ask what does mr steve do normally well normally mr steve well quite often at the moment he's been in the garden doing lots of work in fact i have a feeling he might be becoming a little obsessed with it he will be explaining that in a few moments i don't know where mr steve is because he is due to come on on right now where is mr steve are you around mr steve <laughs> i don't know what's happened to mr steve so hopefully steve will be coming soon and yes he will be here in a few moments don't go away hello mr duncan hello how are you <laughs> a, a, ra a round of applause for mr steve you might have to you might have to move yourself oh don't don't do that please is that better oh mr duncan don't get so worried everything will be all right will it are you sure about that well not not now that we're in lockdown but uh, well not yet it's no change to us really yes yeah. but there's no <laughs> there, in much when lock no lockdown yet but from next thursday because we have to get it right we don't want people panicking <laughs> if there's anyone watching in england at the moment they might suddenly start panicking we're not in lockdown at the moment they know but from thursday but you well, know what's you know what's been happening what People have been spreading this virus everywhere. Ooh, okay. Is that what you mean? No, I, I don't. I don't mean that. <laughs> Hello. Hello, well, everyone. What I mean. Yes. Is everyone's gone crazy. Oh, yes. everyone's gone crazy. In what way? That way. Oh, shopping. Yeah. Yes. People have been going crazy. We've been uh, watching the news today. And uh, as usual, p people are panic buying and uh, it's 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 not a good idea because we're not going to go short of food no apparently this morning there were there were queues outside all of the major supermarkets sainsbury's tesco's waitrose aldi can you think of any more sainsbury's yes i've said tesco so. tesco i've said those aldi yeah, waitrose said, yeah i've said those uh, budgins 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 um, yes okay then budgins okay maybe the co-op co-op yes so people are are now panic buying here in england because yesterday it was announced that we are once more oh i can't believe it can you can you believe this steve we are once more going into lockdown here in england yeah. well it's a shame but I, I suppose it is necessary is it yes to prevent uh, lots of deaths 
We don't uh, want to mention that word, but that's the idea. Well, you have. <laughs> But we're keeping it happy today. Don't worry. Even though YouTube has a lot of technical problems also today, I had lots of problems. That's why I was late. Oh, yes. YouTube. Oh, yes. <laughs> YouTube once again. Blame had... YouTube for being late, Mr. Duncan. We yes. all know what really happened. <laughs> Th there was actually no thumbnail on my. I couldn't get the thumbnail to appear. Really? And all of the things were missing. All of the elements from my live stream were, were missing. I don't know what happened. Something very strange is happening over at YouTube, I think. Lots of people saying hello to me today. Thank you very much indeed. Someone says bonjour. Oh, uh, bonjour. Tan Nguyen Son says bonjour. Tan Nguyen Son, bonjour. Uh, so thank you for that. I like to be say people saying hello to me in a different language. It's very nice. Uh, I heard you were talking about hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. Have, you, I, have you heard of that? I have, yes. Yes, I once, uh, many a time, well, I don't say many a time, <laughs> but uh, it's commonly used, isn't it, if you've been out on the town yes, if drinking a lot of alcohol. If, you, if, you've, if you've been drunk. And you feel very ill in the morning, people say a little quick, swift drink hmm. will take the, uh, the symptoms of a bad head away. I don't know whether it works. I don't think that's true. So, but, but do you know sure, why? It's a good idea. Do you know why they say hair of the dog? No. Apparently it all comes from superstition that if you if you if you were bitten by a dog, Steve. Yes, if I'm you were, listening. If you were, <laughs> I have I'm a feeling you're not the live chat. At I, the I have same a time. I have a feeling you're not listening to me. Quite capable of listening to you, Mr. Duncan, yes. and looking at the live chat uh, I don't at the same time. Anyway. Hair of the dog comes yes. from the superstition of consuming some of the hair from a dog that has bitten you to make you well so if you are bitten by a dog you will consume a little bit of that dog normally it's hair and it is believed that it makes you well don't try that by the way please don't start eating <laughs> your dog's hair to make you well talking about eating animals i was just watching uh, a documentary on rt okay Russia Today television, which we often watch as, as just as something different to yes. uh, BBC because uh, you get a different perspective on what's going on around the world. And Al Jazeera, we watch that sometimes as well. Anyway, there was a, the, I, I don't know which country they were in because I didn't see the beginning of it, but they were eating cats. OK. Yes, there were a group of sort of rebel, rebel army sort of men uh, who believed that if they ate a cat... Uh, there is an evil spirit in the cat and that will go into them and make them stronger when they go to go to war to fight. So, yeah, superstitions all around the world, which, you know, I personally, we're not fond of cats. Now, we've got to be careful what we say here because we're going to upset lots Sorry, of people. You're saying this, not me. <laughs> OK, let's not go there because I'm sure we'll upset lots of people. But that is true. Yes. I would not kill and eat a cat. Well, no. But in some countries, <laughs> uh, in this, I don't know which country it was. They believe that it makes you stronger if you yeah. eat the meat of a cat. And they were going around from yeah. house to house Sorry. trying to buy cats from people because they were going off to war uh, to consume them, to make them stronger. See, I, so, I, thought, uh, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say that they eat the cat because they believe it will give them nine lives. You see? <laughs> no, because they, they believed in this particular country or this particular part of a country that there is an evil spirit in a cat and if you eat it yes the evil spirit goes in you and makes you stronger yes and more powerful as a warrior i think you've just said that uh, yes i'm having i'm having a very strange feeling of deja vu again <laughs> uh, beatrice says hello beatrice did you bake something special for the 14th anniversary of mr duncan yesterday we haven't even mentioned it today was it yesterday yesterday the 31st of october halloween yesterday but also Yesterday was the anniversary of my YouTube channel being created. The 31st of October 2006 was when all this, all this started 14 years ago. So now it's official. We've been doing this for over 14 years. Well, Beatrice, I did cook something special. Oh, yes. I hope you're going to show it soon. OK, uh, right. Yes. Yeah, so I cooked Mr. Duncan because last week I cooked scones, baked, baked some scones. But Mr. Duncan 
likes cheese scones or yeah. scones. So I baked Mr. Duncan a cheese scone. Yes. And maybe I will show it later. Uh, so I cooked myself scones with uh, dried fruit in, sultanas, raisins. Mm -hmm. And I cooked Mr. Duncan ones with cheese in. Yes, a little bit of cheese. Yes. Anyway, we might have a look at that in a moment because we're going to take a short break for two Already? reasons. One, I need a wee. And also, too, I think we can prepare something to eat. Does that sound like a good idea? Oh, why not? Maybe we can prepare something. So Again. we are going to have a little break. One of my full English lessons. Don't forget, there are many lessons on my YouTube channel. A lot of people forget this, you know. A lot of people forget that I have about 700 lessons on my YouTube channel. 700? Yes, over. Seven, is that 700? 700. Seven, let me get this again. 700 English teaching lessons yes. on your YouTube channel. Yes. One, oh, two, no. three, four, no. five. Steve, we don't have time for that. 700. That's a lot, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Just shows how hard you've been working through these years. I, I really thought Steve was going to count to 700 then. We haven't got time for that. We have not got time for that. Here it is then, an excerpt from one of my full English lessons and then we will be back with something nice to eat. Funny how some English phrases have more than one use. Here is a good example of this occurrence. The phrase take off can be used in many ways. You can take off something, as in removing it. To peel off something or to remove one thing from another is to take off. You can take off the paint from an object, such as a door or wall. You can take off your clothes. To remove something is to take off. To mimic or impersonate someone is to take off. To copy the mannerisms of a person such as their movements and voice is to take off. His take off of Elvis Presley was really convincing. To delete something from a list you will need to take off that item. I had to take off the names of the absent students. To lift off from the ground in an aircraft is to take off. You take off in an aeroplane. The plane is ready to leave the ground. Can you please tell the passengers to prepare for takeoff? There is also take down, which describes the action of making a written record of something. I will need to take down your name and address. Take down can also mean dismantle. To slowly break something apart with care is to take down something. We will have to take down the tent tomorrow when the wind is not so strong. To destroy a person's reputation with criticism can be described as a takedown. You defeat someone by criticising them. A website that is removed from the internet is a takedown. The owners of the website were given a takedown notice by the government. Even the word take can be used in many ways. To steal something is take. The way you view something is take. What is your take on the situation in Syria? To film a sequence that has been prepared in advance is a take. You might have to do many takes of something before you get it right. Let's go again with another take. I hope we get it right this time. To transport something from one place to another is also take. You can take a person to the airport in your car. You can take some clothes out of the wardrobe. To take in is to give a home to someone. You might take in a homeless person during the winter months. To relax or consider something for a while or to process something is to 
take time. It will take time for you to recover from your injuries. There are so many uses of the word take. It's true. You can take my word for it. <laughs> It's time now to take a look at another buzzword. A buzzword is a phrase or sentence that is popular during a certain period of time or is commonly used in general. Today's buzzword is controversy or controversy. The word controversy is a noun which means a row in response or a negative reaction to something. A strong reaction to something such as someone's personal opinion or a provocative action. His words caused controversy throughout the world. You can create controversy by saying something inflammatory or provocative. The words used cause anger and outrage. To speak in a way that offends people. A controversy usually involves people with opposing views. One group agrees or holds the same opinion whilst the other group disagrees, thus creating controversy. The occurrence of the controversy is described as controversial, a controversial plan, a controversial idea, a controversial film, a controversial speech. Controversial is the adjective form of controversy. The president has announced controversial reforms to the healthcare service. The controversial thing creates controversy. It is controversial because one group objects while another accepts. A person who causes controversy is controversial. He or she is a controversial character. The word controversy comes from the Latin word for turn around which refers to an opposing view or the actual disagreement. Synonyms of controversy include altercation, disagreement, dispute, opposition, quarrel, wrangle. The overall disagreement over something in society can be described as controversy. The subject in question is controversial. Life is full of surprises. You never really know what is round the corner. Life is unpredictable and quite often you can find yourself being caught on the hop. I love that expression. To get caught on the hop means to be caught unawares and unprepared. If you are distracted by something you are doing, then it is possible to suddenly be caught on the hop. You were caught off guard and forced into a difficult situation by being unprepared. This phrase is often used in British English. We can also say that a person who is busy doing something is on the hop. They are bustling. They are active. They are actively doing something. They are on the hop. Another great phrase for being unprepared is caught with your pants down. <laughs> A person who has been put in a difficult position by being unprepared for something has been caught with their pants down. The regional manager's visit caught us all with our pants down. The inquiry caught many politicians with their pants down. To be caught on the hop, to be caught with your pants down, you were not ready for what happened. For most of us, it's just another day in this crazy thing we call life. Oh, very interesting. There it was, one of my full English lessons, and there are many of those on my YouTube channel. 
you can check them out after today's live stream has come to an end no oh. and we're back it's english addict by the way for those who are flicking around if you flick or click around the internet it means you are looking at different things so hello if you've never seen us before my my name is duncan hello and this is mr steve uh, and we're on the internet right now that's it really that's the whole story oh and also i've been doing this for 14 years <laughs> oh that's all you're going to talk about now isn't it i didn't mention it once until you mentioned it well, somebody mentioned it i forgot about it though that's the weird thing i actually that's forgot strange. i forgot your 14th anniversary yes well when you think about it there are a lot of other things going on especially Rich. good job people other people are recognizing your tremendous achievement mr duncan <laughs> I it think it is actually. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> Can you believe in 14 years I've never received my my little award from YouTube? Never. So even though I'm I'm on I think it's nearly 900,000 subscribers, I have never received my little award from YouTube ever. So that's not very nice. Oh, look what we have here. So this is what Mr. Steve made yesterday. So this is a, a cheese scone. And Mr. Steve, you have. Oh, okay. I've got the traditional uh, fruit scone. So so Steve has fruit in his and I have cheese in mine. But it looks as if Steve <laughs> has, has already started eating it. Yes. Yeah, so in the break, <laughs> I've already eaten one half of my scone. So anyway, so this is the first cheese scone or scone that Mr. Steve has made for me. I'm going to try it now. I'd like to try some as well because I've never made them before. No, this is mine. You can't. break me off a little piece, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> I'll certainly and, break uh, you something. I've got tissues ready because we'll <laughs> really? need these for our sticky fingers. OK, then. Uh, well, I will because there's jam on mine. There's no answer to that. Uh, Oh, Steve, we're hey. going to try this live, are we? Yes, let's do it live. Let's do it live, baby. Let, let's live dangerously in this world. I'll put this on my plate. Ooh. OK, I'm going to try. So this is Steve's cheese scone that he made yesterday. Mm. Let's hope it lives up to expectations. Mm. Let's, let's have a taste. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Oh. Mm. I'm brilliant. You're amazing. You are. You are actually quite amazing. It's true. I won't deny it. Hmm. I think it was Rosa. Rosa said that she gave or she, she gave the recipe to her sister for the scones. And now everyone loves them. All her family love them. I can't talk. Yes, yeah, so if anybody hasn't looked up the recipe, eight ounces of self-raising flour. OK. Two ounces of butter or margarine. Mm -hmm. Mix it all up until it goes all crumbly. And then add milk. Oh, no, you also need to add a teaspoon of, of, of baking powder. Yes. Which helps it rise a bit better in the oven. Half a teaspoon of salt. Mix it all together with the fat. Uh, until you get bread breadcrumbs like texture mm. then add in milk around a quarter of a pint but be careful because you only want to add enough so that it's still it turns into like a dough you don't want it all sticky mm. and then you can add in whatever you like on top of that cheese if you like cheese dried fruit if you like dried fruit Mac get, get it into a nice and then cut off little bits stick it in the oven and cut it into six put it in the oven on a high temperature for 12 minutes and that's what you get they're not difficult to make they're not difficult to make but they this is absolutely gorgeous well i like to please you mr duncan because you know what happens if i don't you punish me don't you mr duncan <laughs> i have to please mr duncan because he gets very upset mm. i'm only joking he doesn't really uh, but yes what a, it, Pedro, um, thank you, Pedro, for telling everybody to smash the like button, uh, meaning give Mr. Duncan lots of likes, because then when you get lots of likes on a video, 
it gets spread around more because YouTube thinks, oh, people are liking that. Let's spread it around a bit more. So it is quite important for Mr. Duncan mm. uh, to increase his popularity. Of course, maybe you don't want him to become too popular. Maybe uh -huh. you just want to keep him to yourself uh -huh. in a very selfish way. Just these few hundred of us on every Sunday. You don't want to see thousands. Maybe you're trying to stop Mr. Duncan becoming successful. Yes. Uh, but no, please like. OK. And uh, Pedro also said uh, uh, that the Boeing 747, uh, presumably the MAX, uh, is uh, is ready for flight again. Um, OK. You know, would you go on it? I'm not sure I would. I, d I don't know. Um, <laughs> You've only just mentioned this and I have no idea. Is Did that it? the one that, uh, you know, had a few, let's say, technical problems and two fell out of the sky? Okay. Anyway, not sure I'd want to go on it just yet. <laughs> but that's controversial. Um, drool is flowing, says Sergio. Mm. Oh, is that because looking at us, uh, you feel so excited looking at us that you're drooling with excitement? Yeah. Or is it because of the uh, the scones? Yeah, maybe. Oh, I can't let this sit here, Mr. Duncan. Oh, by the way. Mm hmm. You see this plate? This plate here. This plate. This plate. And Mr. Duncan's got one as well. I've got this plate. These plates uh, belong to my grandparents. Oh, OK. We've never heard that story before. No, well, I thought, because I never throw anything away. I've got everything from when I was a child, virtually everything. In fact, I was discussing this with my mother. Maybe I'll show it next week. I've got an old radio, uh, transistor radio, which must be... 40 years old at least. Um, I've got my old bike from when I was a teenager. The old bike? Yes. I was just hanging up in the garage. Um, all sorts of things. Maybe we can show them next week. It works. I tried the radio out yesterday. It actually works. I can still feel the excitement when my father brought this back. He went to London on a business trip and came back and brought me this little transistor radio. I was so excited. Um, are you going to say anything? You haven't said anything for a while, Mr Duncan. Uh, I feel quite energetic today. <laughs> Mind you, I have been busy outside filling yeah. in some more gaps in the wall. You have the energy, but you're just sort of rambling. I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling. Oh, look. Scones seem like small cakes. Could be a... Now, I don't know how to pronounce that, Satorino. For Focaccina. Ah, right. Uh, a focaccina. You have to be careful how you say that. Definitely. Yes, that's some kind of uh, sweet bread, I think, isn't it? So one of the things I've noticed is, is even though we talk a lot about English culture, many of the things that we do, of course, originated from in other places. So we have over the years, I think it would be fair to say, Steve, that we have adopted many other cultural habits or maybe different types of food from other countries for example curry i mean we we eat curry all the time here in england so there are many many restaurants selling curry even though the they're not open they won't be open from thursday they're going to close them all again because of lockdown can you believe it maybe i could make some curried scones mr duncan the only thing about scones or scones is that they stick in your throat a bit when you've eaten them talking of which last week i went to the hospital <coughs> i did didn't mm -hmm. i i had to go to the hospital i had to have an exploratory examination exploratory that means they have to look inside your body and i had to do something i had to experience something that was really unpleasant this guy, this doctor, he took a long tube with a camera in the end and he put it into my nose and it went right down my nose into my throat because he wanted to have a little look around, you see. You're very brave, Mr Duncan. It was really unpleasant. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had a camera put down your nose, put into your nose and then into your throat? It's horrible. Is my, have I got any any bits of uh, crumb? Crumb? Any crumbs or jam? Mm. Oh, Mr. Duncan. Yeah. 
These are amazing. <laughs> They're orgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, lovely memories. Yes, it's nice to keep things. I like... Yes, so these, these plates must be... So when my grandparents died, we obviously had to clear the house of their of all their uh, furniture and belongings. And I want I kept a lot of it because and, and I use I've still got their, their dining room table. Mm. I use it in my office. I don't like to throw things away. I like that connection with the past, with my past, with memories, because it triggers memories. Yes. So they had a whole set of these. Um, they must be. Because my grandparents died in the early 80s. OK. Maybe their ghosts are watching us now. Maybe. They must be 100 years old. Maybe they must be, Mr. Duncan. Maybe they're sort of ho hovering. Ooh. Maybe, maybe they're, they're looking upon me and saying, oh, Stephen, you are using our plates. We're going to, as spirits, we're going to protect you in some way. You know, I don't like the, I don't uh, like the idea. I don't think that's a good idea, though, having ghosts watching you, because... They could they could see you anywhere. What yes. about if you're on the toilet, and maybe you, you're very constipated, and you're, and you're there for maybe one hour trying to push and push, and then you look up, and there are your grandparents hovering around, spectral ghosts. Yes, you only want them to be around for I don't events when you're doing something that's, you know, not embarrassing. Yes. But they could they could just pop up any any time. Pop up any time. Any Maybe time. they're there now looking. Yes. Thinking, what are those two idiots doing on that live stream? Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> Sergio has had a gastro a gastros gastroscopy. Oh yes. A gastroscopy is when they look into your stomach. I've had one of those, Sergio. <laughs> Have you? Yes. It was big. It was black, and it went all the way down into my stomach. Uh, but what about the camera, <laughs> Mr. Duncan? It was it was horrendous, Sergio, wasn't it? Anyone's had one of those? Um, I get a bit of sort of acid reflux and problems like that. So the doctor said, let's have a look down, make sure you haven't got something nasty. Uh, and yes, I had to go for one of those. This great big long tube, and it's oh, you have to swallow, and you have to put this. They spray the back of your throat first. Mm -hmm. Is that numb the is back that, of your throat? So there's no sensation, so you don't start choking or gagging. Presumably, and then they put this sort of plastic thing in your mouth, and then they shove this thing in. You have to swallow, and it goes all the way down. You can actually see it yourself on the monitor. Mm. Um, the nurses were lovely, but it was pretty horrendous. Mm. Um, some people are are, uh, are uh, put under for that or have anaesthetic to have that procedure but I couldn't because I had to drive myself back home afterwards because yes. Mr Duncan can't drive uh, so I, can't. I, had to, I had to tough it out uh, is, uh, there, is there anywhere else you've had a camera put? Yes, I've had one up the nose as well because oh. I had my voice went all hoarse and the doctor was worried again so that isn't very nice that was worse actually than the one down there hmm. although th don't worry about it if you have to have it because, of course, the reason why they do that, the reason why they like to have a look inside your body is just to make sure things are all right. So I've been having trouble with my my voice and my throat and my ear. I think I mentioned it last week. So I managed to actually get an appointment with the hospital. Very lucky. I got an appointment with the NHS hospital and they gave me a, a wonderful examination. They, they made sure everything was all right. So that's it. And then the doctor said, yes, everything's all right. Nothing serious. So I did feel better. Yes. I don't know what it is. When you get to a certain age, Steve, what happens when you get to a certain age? You start worrying about every ache and every pain in your body because you always think it's the worst thing you see. You always think, oh, I've got a, I've got a pain here or I've got a pain here. And you think it's cancer. Always, isn't it? You always think. You always go to the worst case scenario. Once you get to a certain age, everything that happens to you might be cancer. I know I'm not making a joke here. I'm not being flippant or light-hearted, but it is true. When you get older, you start to worry that everything that's happening to you. If you don't go to the toilet for a couple of days, you think it must be cancer. 
If you have indigestion and your stomach's hurting, you think, oh, it must be cancer. It, it always so it, it almost becomes like an obsession. So I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit worried about all the pain I was experiencing in my ear and throat. Christine. But everything's all right. Everything's all right. So I feel quite pleased about that. I, at least I had some good news. Christine Bro Capron has also had a camera into her nose. And uh, so has Lewis as well to examine his vocal cords. Yes, I had. That's why I had it uh, as well. And they get you to do try and make some sounds when you're doing it because it's it's. Um, you don't think that when you get a bit of acid reflux, a bit of pain here, uh, and as you get older, you become more susceptible to this, that in fact that acid, mm -hmm. particularly at night, is actually can get onto your vocal cords mm. and cause damage. So this is actually the, the, the acid that's in your stomach naturally coming up into your throat. And over time, if, you, if, if it happens a lot, it can actually damage your throat and all sorts of other things in your throat. You don't realise it's happening because it's you, you might go a bit hoarse or you might have trouble speaking or having to keep clearing your throat. And I'd had this for years and then eventually my voice went very hoarse mm. and I could hardly speak. Uh, so that's what I was diagnosed as having and I've been on tablets to reduce the acid ever okay. since and it solved all the problems i wasn't planning on going going into all of our medical problems but what are the thing where steve where where might be the worst place to have a camera put in your body what could be the worst well, so I've there's the, your nose that's quite uncomfortable but of course it's a good it's a good thing for checking out all of the problems in your throat you can have one down your throat uh, you can have one also up your bum as well. Somebody's I've mentioned that. I've never had a camera placed there, to be honest. And also, can't you can you have one also down your pee pee hole? You can, Mr. Oh, Duncan. You no, can. no. So for a man, that would be okay. That's it. That's absolute the, no no. That's the worst place. Yes. That they actually put a camera. Uh, I oh think my. we get it, Mr. Duncan. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Ooh. But you shouldn't leave these things, should you? If, if we're going to say anything positive today. Yes. If you get sort of blood in your stools, in your wee, yes. anything like that. If, or if there's blood, strange aches or lumps. Yes. If there's blood coming out of your body where it's not supposed to, it's normally... Get it checked out. Yes, get it checked out. So that's what I did. I was a bit worried. I thought maybe, oh, I, be I better get this checked to make sure and and of course it is a great relief as well you feel relieved when you find out so the doctor said i can tell you now it's nothing serious it's not cancer and i thought oh isn't that great you just think okay thank goodness for that you were skipping out of that hospital weren't you mr Duncan? i was i was rather cock a hoop and the bonus was, because normally, I don't know whether you have to in other countries, but in the UK, when you go to the hospital and you park at the hospital car park, you have to pay. Hmm. Uh, it used to be free years ago, but you have to pay now. Something like £2 an hour, I would say, mm -hmm. on average, which is quite a lot. Uh, you even have to pay if you work at the hospital, which I think is disgraceful. But anyway, uh, but because of Covid... Hmm. Uh, and they didn't don't want people putting their fingers on the buttons in the car park uh, where you pay the machine to put your ticket on the car. Mm -hmm. It was free, mm. so it didn't cost me a penny. To I still park. I still find it surprising that you have to pay to park in a car park at a hospital to see your sick relatives. I find that incredible, but that's life. That's the way it is. People do like your beard, Mr. Duncan. It is getting quite a response. Yes. So this is the beard that I, that I actually grew. I grew this for my Halloween lesson. And I was going to shave it off. I was going to remove it. But then I thought, no, I might keep it because I think it looks quite nice on camera. Definitely on camera. In real life, <laughs> it doesn't look so good. But I think it photographs 
it photographs very well in this light see Belarusia says uh, that her father had an ache and uh, turned out to be cancer so it's best to get it checked out mm. nine times out of ten it probably is nothing serious but you know if you catch cancer early mm. it's quite often very treatable I think that the, the worst thing so of course leave it the worst thing is men if there's one thing that men don't like doing it's admitting that they're sick so men are not very good at admitting that they are ill or they feel unwell they like to be strong and macho I have to carry on whatever it is whatever's happening but of course sometimes you have to go to the doctor you have don't be afraid get it checked get it checked and then you can make sure that you are all right Vitas says you're going to look like Father Christmas by <laughs> by by Christmas Day Santa Claus Santa Claus by Christmas Day Christmas oh my. That we even have that are we going to have Christmas this year because it looks as if I think they will cancel Christmas I think they're going to cancel it I think they're going to say no 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 Christmas this year it's cancelled <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised uh, Andy says cancer is not a horrible sentence well that's true it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die no I think it, there's a high recovery rate yeah. if you catch it early for a lot of cancers these I think days the secret is to catch it early Olga says I thought we would speak about ghosts and vampires today oh, we're going to look at scary words would you like to look at some scary words Mr Steve scary Ooh. <laughs> scary English words <laughs> are they scary because they're difficult to pronounce scary are they scary in that the meaning of the words the actual words themselves are oh. scary so let's have a look shall we now these words can also be used in other ways you see so what's what's interesting about this is they can be used in other ways now here's an interesting one I mentioned this earlier maybe when you're sitting on the toilet the ghosts of your family are all watching you <laughs> whilst you're trying to push a poo out it's not very good is it I don't want that or maybe your honeymoon your honeymoon you are with your wife and you're very excited and then you look up or maybe look across <laughs> and there they are they're all going oh we're watching you <laughs> Daisy Cow says the only problem with your beard Mr Duncan is that it covers your lovely dimples hmm oh yes. yes they're more difficult to see aren't they I've always noticed that the one on Mr Duncan's left side is bigger than the one on his right mm. side I think you can you can almost see them just about maybe you could just shave in the dimples yeah uh, so that they always remain visible mm. there's there is my dimple there it is you mm. can't the, the only problem is you can't see my dimple on my chin because I also have a little dimple on my chin but True. of course my beard is now is now hidden that from view anyway thank you for your comments ghost now we can use ghost in other, other ways can't we we can yes for a, for example in there is a, a well-known phrase we might say that a person doesn't have a ghost of a chance yes they have no chance of something happening they don't have they don't have a ghost of a chance it's very interesting it, it, it also can can mean something that is there but can't be seen so maybe you might ghost a person or maybe copy someone without them realizing it um, a, I suppose a good example would be in literature you can have a ghost writer have you ever heard of that a ghost writer is a person who writes a book but another person takes takes all of the the, uh, the credit for it so maybe I, I want to write about my life but I get another person to write it for me but then I put my name on the front ah so, so you haven't actually written hmm. your autobiography somebody else has yeah. so someone has written it even though I'm saying I wrote it so it's actually more I, I suppose you might say deceptive 
I think it's yes it's cheating really isn't it but, yes somebody but, else but the, and they don't get recognition it's just your name that goes I suppose but they do get paid <laughs> they do get paid yes so go, just can we just go back to your first uh, example oh yes having, you said ghost of a chance you have a ghost of a chance Shall we maybe give an example of how you might use that in a sentence? Yes, you might talk about, um, I don't know, here's a good example. Uh, Boris Johnson doesn't have a ghost of a chance of being re-elected in the next election. Yes. Someone, someone might say that. You yes. Say. Or you might say. There is no way there is a ghost of a chance. There is no way that Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan will stop eating chocolate. Not a ghost of a chance. Not a ghost of a chance. Exactly. So you're using that expression to uh, to say that something is very unlikely to happen. Mm, yes. Or the possibility. Of course, I, I think you can use it in the opposite way and say there is a ghost of a chance, which means it might be somewhere nearby, but still still not visible. Hmm. Do you like horror movies? Gennaro asks. I do like horror movies, I must admit. I was watching something <laughs> the other night, very horrific. Um, one of the adaptations of Stephen King's It. A very scary story, but also a very scary movie as well. So there are various versions of It by Stephen King. But <laughs> this, this particular film that I watched the other night was really scary well yeah. I, I'd fallen asleep yeah, you fell asleep and woke up and I was fell all, asleep on the settee but I often do all this horror taking place and I woke up to these horrible sounds of screaming blood curd blood curdling screaming sounds yes. and Mr Duncan was watching this horror film I don't like horror films yes. uh, I get quite scared by them can I just say that it it is a very scary film especially if you don't like clowns and a lot of people a lot of people don't like clowns but there is a very scary clown you were watching another horror film last night i fell asleep again last night on the settee at about 11 o'clock okay probably a hint that i should go to bed earlier and uh, i woke up to more screams and you were watching uh, what was that film you were watching last night that's, uh, what, that's what we're talking about now that wasn't the same film? Yes. It. That's the film. Oh, I thought... No, that wasn't the one with the... Oh, was it? Was it the same film? Yes. Oh, where the, where the, the house eventually goes... Oh, Poltergeist. Yes. I th oh, OK. Trying to make then. out I'm going mad. No, I wasn't. Poltergeist. <laughs> yes. That's, Poltergeist, that's yes. That's a brilliant movie. We, we watched a little bit of that, but it was on very late. And, of course, I, I had to get up early to do this, you see. But yes, Poltergeist, directed by Steven Spielberg, a very good movie, very creepy. I like the little lady. I like the little woman who's looking for the evil spirits. Yes, yeah, she's very good. This house is clean. <laughs> like uh, Saturina said that uh, she's seen a ghost mm -hmm. in uh, a city in uh, the southern United States. Another one we can uh, use. Yes. Oh, sorry, Steve. No, that's fine. Yes. Another one we can use is we can describe a person as looking like a ghost. Yes. If if maybe they they look unwell. Yes. Or maybe they look surprised or shocked by something. <gasps> you look like you look like a ghost. Or, or I know what you're <laughs> going to say. Go on, Steve. If you've seen something that's upset you, frightened you, mm -hmm. then you might go very pale. All the blood will go out of your face uh, and you'll look very pale and somebody might say, oh, what's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> you look because like, yes. You've had some, maybe some bad news or something like that and you, 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 your face takes on this very scared look. Mm. It might not that you've seen a ghost, it might be you just had some bad news or yeah. somebody's told you something like you've found out you've, your partner's left you or something. Yes. Uh, or uh, you've just lost your job. Yes. And you come off the phone and you, you'll take on that. <gasps> and the shock will, all the blood will drain from your face. And someone might say, what's the matter? What's up? You look like you've seen a ghost. Wow. Oh. And or so, or, an, or an, uh, an ill person, a person who's looking ill. You might say, you look like a ghost. 
because you are pale you are white you are looking very under the weather yes Olga I don't enjoy horror films anymore either because when I watch them they're always on late at night and you go to bed and I, you've been watching it and then I go and switch the lights off yeah. around various parts of the house okay. I always check outside and I feel a bit scary uh, yes so yes you don't want to go to bed really with your brain frightened about some I mean the news is bad enough yeah there's enough horror going on just on the news you know we don't need <laughs> other horrors to watch that will disturb your sleep if you want to see a horror film you can see a real one just go outside and watch everyone walking around the streets in their masks it's like some sort of zombie apocalypse look at that Lynch 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 says mm. I watched Jaws when I was a child it really frightened me mm. I did as well we must be a similar age because my parents took me to the I was probably about I don't know 11 or 12 11 or 12 and my parents took me to the cinema to watch Jaws okay and I was absolutely I couldn't sleep for days hmm. it absolutely scared the into this very day to this very day Steve cannot go near a shark don't, you were, yeah, you, you I can't go near a shark. You won't. He won't go anywhere near a shark. No, it's, it's put him completely off sharks. So yes, and I, I can still remember that scene. The one that was the most scary was okay. It was under the water, and they were looking. They were looking for a body, and then a, suddenly a head floats past. Okay, and the music does something. Yes, you know. <laughs> and that that was the scariest thing I think I've ever seen. Yes. But you know, but of course you have that famous string movement that the music <laughs> yes it was a pretty horrific uh, when you watch it now it's almost funny we are basically in a horror movie now it's almost funny when you watch jaws now because that 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 uh, shark looks so ridiculous it's yeah. obviously made of rubber yes well right. obviously it's not a real shark it's you know almost that. like a comedy now yeah could you imagine that hello uh, uh, my name is Steven Spielberg I've got the beard you see I've got Steven Spielberg's beard now we're going to make a movie called Jaws the only thing is some of you are going to get eaten during the making we're going to use a real shark we're not going to use a rubber one or fake shark we're going to use a real one so some of you are going to have to be eaten by a shark I hope you don't mind but you know it might be a bit uncomfortable well at the time of course it looked quite real because it was the 80s was it the 80s no it must have been the 70s it was the 70s I was going to say it must have been the 70s we're talking I think around 76 76 yes yeah. I would have been I'm not going to say how no. old I would have anyway. been anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so oh, okay <laughs> ghost ghost that's the first one. we've only got another 20 words to look at so a ghost you have a ghost of a chance a possibility a faint possibility something that's there but maybe not completely visible at the moment uh let's have a look at another one Ooh, okay then let's <laughs> i'm just pressing lots of buttons here this looks easy but let me tell you now it is not easy here's another one steve eventually oh terrorize you see so this can also refer to horror things that are horror horrible or terrifying terrorize so something that is around that is causing panic you might say that the coronavirus is terrorizing people because people are afraid they are nervous of it so to terrorize to create panic worry distress terror terrorize yes that means yes exactly maybe there's a person in your neighborhood who is always causing problems maybe they play their music very loud and they're they're always very aggressive you might say that that man is terrorizing the neighborhood he's always causing problems and disruption he's making everyone's lives very difficult around where people are living Here's another one, Steve. We'll do one more because we, we really are running out of time. I've got to play the sentence game today. We are playing the sentence game, but don't forget we were 20 minutes late. Ah, oh, right. Well, you were. Well, 
I was late because of YouTube. I don't know what's happened to YouTube, but they're doing some they're doing some very strange things at the moment. Very strange things. Belarusia anyway. has got a story here, a scary story, a true oh. story. Hello, Belarusia. At night, a man was walking along a cemetery and he saw another man near him. Are you afraid of walking alone in this place, especially at night? Said the man. When I was alive, I was. But now I'm not. Oh, I see. Because he was a ghost. Yes. Hmm. <gasps> wow. Unexpected ending. Scary things can really put the willies up you. Is phantasm an English word? Phantasm, yeah. That's also a famous movie from the 1980s, Phantasm. Very scary movie. There is a man, a very tall man, uh, with a very thin face, and, and Phantasm. Phantasm, Phantasm is a horror movie. But also a phantasm is, is, like a, is like a phantom, something that haunts a place. A phantom. Like Phantom of the Opera, you see. The guy with the mask who says, Hello, I'm haunting this theatre and I'm playing the organ late at night and keeping all of the neighbours awake. That sort of thing. Next. Is this your latest word that you are that you are showing to us, Mr. Duncan? Scare. scare, scare. Yes, you can have a scare. You can be scared, but also you can scare someone as a verb. You scare someone. You scare a person. However, we can also have something that causes a lot of fear and panic. You can have a, a health scare. True. So a health scare, maybe. Well, I suppose my example might be I had a health scare with my throat. So something that causes fear or worry is a health scare, a health scare, something causes fear and panic. Anyway, Steve, we're going to move on because we're running out of time. We've only got half an hour. Well, actually, 25 minutes. Today's live stream has gone by very fast. We were in town yesterday and I couldn't help noticing <laughs> that the town was completely dead. It was deserted. Look, there it is. That is actually a photograph taken. Now, normally on a Saturday afternoon, much Wenlock is very busy. It's full of people doing their shopping. But we went into town yesterday, didn't we? And it was so quiet. You might say that it was dead. Ah, see, there's another scary word. So dead can refer to a person who is no longer alive. They are deceased or a place that is quiet. There, is, there, are, there are no people around. You might say Much Wenlock High Street yesterday was completely dead. There was no one around. And there, that is actually yesterday. I took that photograph just to prove. <laughs> You can go into a, a bar or a restaurant mm. uh, that's supposed to have some atmosphere, but there's nobody in there. So you might say, oh, it's dead in here. Yes. Let's go somewhere else. Yes, it's dead in here tonight. So if you go to a bar and there's no atmosphere, you're not enjoying yourself, there's no one around, everyone looks miserable, you just say, oh, it's dead in here. Yes. Let's go somewhere else. Yes. So that's it. Meaning there's not much life going on there is not much life around in that no. particular establishment where are all the people so what about where you are are you having any new lockdown restrictions because from next thursday england is going into lockdown not as bad as in spring not as bad because the schools and universities are staying open some people disagree with that they say it's a bad idea but that's what's happening. Shops, some shops will stay open. Supermarkets will stay open. But everything else is going to close. And we, we've all been told to stay at home again from next Thursday. Which is all right for you because you're staying at home all the time anyway. Yes. Doing for, your live streams and have been for 14 years. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I'll be doing special live streams because during the last lockdown, we did special live streams every day. Do you remember? Do you remember my daily live streams? So I'm not sure what to do this year. They were very popular, Mr. Duncan. The problem is I have a lot of things I'm doing at the moment. I'm learning some new skills as well. So I'm doing some some self-learning 
as well. So, so, so when I'm not here, I'm still busy doing things, you see. Here's a good question from Adam. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between scared and frightened? They are pretty much synonymous, to be honest. I would say so. Yes, they're pretty much synonymous with each other. So you can use them as synonyms. You can use them to one to replace the other. I was so scared. I was so frightened. So to feel a sudden sensation of fear, you are suddenly afraid you are scared you are frightened something makes you feel scared it makes you feel <gasps> frightened i think sometimes the word scared uh don't know if i'm right in saying that sometimes scared is a word used to make you feel a bit wimpy i think sometimes if somebody says oh you're oh. scared are you oh i see a coward yes, yes. i think if ah. people are mocking you yes but but that's a good that's a good uh, good one to mention actually coward so a coward might be a person who's always scared of things they they are not very brave so oh what's the matter with you are you scared go on jump over your neighbor's fence go on steal some apples from his garden no oh what's the matter are you scared scaredy cat scared me. but you wouldn't say that you wouldn't use the word are you frightened? Mm. You wouldn't. The scared is more of a mocking. Yes. It can be used. Yes. Obviously, seriously, but it can also be used to mock somebody. Yes. You're, you're, you're too afraid to do something. You yes. are. You are chicken. That's another one. You see, you can call a person chicken, a person who is always afraid to do things. What's wrong? Are you chicken? No one. No one calls me chicken <laughs> uh marietta says are you obliged to wear face masks in the uk yes we are Ooh, somebody yes. else mentioned that as well it's very complicated pedro said uh, could i send a hug could i send a hug uh for his friend well yes of course have a hug have a hug oh let's have a hug oh but who's your friend, Pedro? We want to know. Who hear, is your friend? Can you hear the geese? <laughs> they were very low down and close. They were very near the house. Did you hear that? There were some geese, a big flock of geese going over the house then. Did, did you hear them? <laughs> Every day they come over. Yes, that was amazing. That was a real moment of time taking place there. Yes, uh, yes. Richard has to go. See you later, Richard. I hope you will join me next Sunday. We are now going to play the sentence game because Ooh. we are running out of time, Steve. Hey, uh, Tomek uh, uh, makes a point here. Petrified. Oh, petrified. Is it a stronger word than scared? Yes. Well, yes. If you petrify something, it means you make it solid or completely stiff. So if you are petrified, it means you are so afraid you can't move. You can't move. I was petrified. 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 And uh, yes, uh, shiver. Wouldn't that happen if you looked at the Gorgon? You know, the Gorgon with her hair of snakes. She has snakes. And if you look directly at her, you will be petrified. You will turn to stone. You will become like that uh Gennaro says shiver that's a nice word Ooh. shiver Ooh. Ooh. yes Ooh. you might shiver if you're cold but you might also shiver if you're frightened and mm. some or, 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 or you you feel uneasy yes maybe it's dark maybe the lights have gone out you might just shiver mm. it's just a little bit of fear yes that's coming in there it's an fear that's another word it's an so shiver is actually a physical thing so shiver is actually something that is an outward sign it is something that is physically happening you ooh, shiver ooh, steve ooh, ooh. partap das has a birthday no <laughs> Partap doesn't have a birthday. Uh, I nearly fell for it. I nearly fell for it. Partap is is sometimes very naughty. 
No, we know it's your. It's not your birthday today. We know it isn't. He's put a little emoji that looks like a devil. It was sort of winking. It was my my YouTube channel. It was my YouTube channel's birthday yesterday. Anyway, we have to play the sentence game, Steve. OK. Oh, what is a ghost town? Ah, that's yes, a good one. That's a good one. Ghost town. Who said you, who, who said that? Or I think you? I think that was Tomek. I think Tomek said it earlier. Yes, ghost town. Yes. So yesterday. Jim, Jamila said it. Oh, sorry. Jamila. Yesterday, much Wenlock was like a ghost town. You see, like that. Yes, it just means a town that's deserted of people. Yes, a place that's empty. For whatever reason, obviously, if there was a town where a fictitious town where everyone had died. OK. Uh, and they were just ghosts. Mm. Uh, but if uh, if you if you go to somewhere and there's no one around. Yes. In the town, you just say it's like a ghost town here. Yes. It's a phrase you quite often use. It's a disparaging term to mean that there's nothing interesting going on in that place. Yes, or there's no one around. Or there's no one around, but you normally say you might go somewhere. And, yeah, just, oh, it's like a ghost town here. What's going on, you might say. Like Why? A, there was a song in the 1980s. Uh, this town is coming like a ghost town. <laughs> Did you like that? No. Shall we play the sentence game? We've got to because we've only got about uh, 10, <laughs> 17 minutes left. Andy Starr says he's got oh. a birthday soon. Yes. Carry on, Mr Duncan. We're going to play the sentence game, Steve. We have to because we're running out of time. We haven't even got around to talking about the election. Have you heard, Steve? There's a big election taking place. Oh, in America. Yes. Yes, in America. Have you heard about it? Because... Mm. Because... You probably haven't heard about it because no one's talking about it at all. Well, we all, you shouldn't have brought that up, Mr Duncan, anyway. because <laughs> we will talk about that for half an hour. Yes, but briefly, very briefly, the election is taking place. We were going to look at some words to do with that, but we haven't got time. We are, we are almost out of time already. So here we go, Steve. Sorry, Alessandra. Yes. Do you, Alessandra says, do you have any ghost town in the UK? <laughs> so it's not it's not doesn't it's not a term that you use like that. It's just if you go somewhere. Not real ghosts. Not not. A, there, there aren't towns. It's just if you go to a town and there's not many people around mm. at that time. Yes. It doesn't mean there's always it's always like that. Mm. It's just a term to describe a town that that's just got nothing going on. However, however, if there is some sort of problem or if something happens maybe there is a large factory that people work at but then that factory closes down and all the people that live there suddenly find that they have to move away you might be left with a ghost town good point Mr. so that's Duncan. that that could actually be used in that situation anyway <laughs> here we go oh, yes tom it says chernobyl is a ghost town Yes. Yes, because something happened yeah. and everybody moved away and uh, all the houses are empty. So it's a, it's a ghost town. Are, yes. we, are we ever going to play the sentence game? Yes, we are. OK. <laughs> now? Oh, can we do it now, Steve? Yes. OK, let's do it now. You've got people talking about the election. The election. Oh, yes. Anyway, we're not talking about the election. We can talk about that next week. But one, mind you, it's, it's this week, isn't it? Yes, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Lewis thinks that Trump's going to get in for four more years. I think you would agree with that. Oh, well, oh now, now, can we just... <laughs> I need to clarify that. I'm not saying that I want him to win... Because you have to be careful, you see. Yeah, that's true. We, we crazy times, coronavirus, uh, false information. Everyone's everyone's just losing their minds at the moment. I think so. This is just what I think. I, I, I'm not hoping for it. But I'm going to play the sentence game. <laughs> you you did this. <laughs> this is your fault, Steve. <laughs> 
I I think I don't think I don't think Biden is going to win. I, 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 I hate to say that, but I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I think Trump is going to win. And sadly, another four years of, of well, I think, you know, what I'm on about. Well, I disagree. You disagree? I think Biden's going to get in. I think Trump is going to be thrown out. Uh, I think Biden's going to get a huge majority. OK. Uh, do you want to bet on it, Mr. Duncan? I'm not going to bet money. Do you want to bet? Well, we could bet something else. Uh, I don't know what. What about what about the remaining biscuits in this packet of digestive <laughs> but biscuits? You do realise these biscuits won't be here by Tuesday. <laughs> They'll be gone. They'll There's be, a story behind uh, these biscuits. These biscuits will be gone by the end of today's live stream. This packet of biscuits was yesterday afternoon. Okay. Full. And Mr. Duncan has eaten nearly all of them. OK, then. Welcome to yeah, shaming. Nice. Welcome to shaming Mr. Duncan. I'm now shamed. Shall sentence we, game. Shall we play the sentence game for crying out loud? Here we go, then, at the sentence game. We're going to have, I think, <laughs> I, don't, I think we've only got time for two sentence games. Yes, yes, you have got to be careful. Just because you think someone's going to win doesn't mean that you're supporting them. No, that's it. Uh, so Palmyra says, Lewis, are you promoting Mr. Trump? I don't think Lewis is. No one is. He's just saying no, who he thinks he's going to win. Yes, it's like it's a bit like talking about a football match. Maybe you think the team that might be stronger or m maybe has more support will win even though if you don't follow football you still might think oh I think I think Manchester United will win but I don't I don't really know but I have a feeling yeah. it's just you're expressing a feeling you don't necessarily support that team you know you know nowadays you know what I'm sick of nowadays you have to keep explaining yourself whenever you say anything Steve you have to then have an explanation of what you've just said just to make sure that no one <laughs> becomes upset yes. by, by what you've just said. Isn't isn't this do, do you ever do you ever wake up in the morning and just think, what what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's, it's been a very strange year, 2020. What a strange year. Anyway, the sentence game. Sentence game. Sentence game. <laughs> oh, before you do the sentence, no, how many joking? How many joking? <laughs> ah, well, we could, yeah, okay. No, no Steve. Steve? Here we go. The sentence game. We're going to play two, at least two. The new normal, G.K. Murthy. Hello, G.K. Murthy. The new normal, I suppose it is the expression that lots of people are using now to describe the way things are, are happening, the way things are changing. We are all having to get used to new ways of living, new ways of behaving, new rules that we have to observe. So the new normal basically means the new rules, the new rules that we have to now follow. We have to adjust to a new way of life, a different way of life. It isn't the end. It is just change. It's change. Change. Something we have to get used to that is normal. There you go. Right. Sentence game. Sentence game. Uh, so, yes. No. So hot topics. Hot. Is it anything to do with scary words and well, Halloween? Well, it, no. Hot topics. That's basically what it says there. It says okay. hot topics, Steve. Hot topics. Things that people are talking about now. So, so that's is that a, cl a clue. That's a, yes, that's a clue. <laughs> no, I just I just randomly typed that there <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> hot, hot topics. Hot topics, Steve. Would you would you would you like to uh, t tell everyone about today's first sentence game? Certainly. So there's three words. We're starting off with a difficult one, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Three words that you have to get that fits in there. The first word begins with E and is six letters. Six letters. The second word is ten letters, beginning with U. U. And the last word is nine letters, beginning with S. Yes. So mm. the sentence game is now on, everyone. Belarusia has to go, unfortunately. Oh. See you later, Belarusia. Bye-bye. Take care. And can I say a big special hello to your dad as well? A big wave and a thumbs up. 
hello Vitas oh Vitas is here I haven't said hello to Vitas also Maria Claudia is going as well the sentence game do we have any guesses we don't have any guesses Not yet it's a difficult <laughs> one Mr Duncan is it uh, something the something and you'll never be something oh. <laughs> I think I think we're going to get some correct answers soon and I know from who <laughs> I think Tomek definitely has some kind of secret program I think he has a website app. maybe there's a website and you can just put random words in and then it finishes the sentence off for you or Tomek is very 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 clever so the sentence game for I'm those who so, so there we have a sentence you see and there are some missing words all you have to do is put those missing words in there and the clues are underneath what? so we have e six letters u 10 letters s nine letters and it's to do with hot topics things that are current things that are happening right now and there are so many things happening in the world <laughs> it's gone a little bit crazy if you don't mind me saying too crazy Parlap is going or par tap is going as well I would imagine it's very late for many people now you see if you're watching in Asia it's it's quite late there it's probably one o'clock in the morning thank you Valentin so we have oh we have Valentin escape university and seductive mm. escape the university <laughs> escape the university and you will never be seducted oh, okay then or seductive interesting tomek has got it though Tomek. Uh, also Akshay hello Akshay Akshay Thakur yes well done you've got it right as Fair well tax going as well yeah oh, you've, you've, have you already said that I've said that okay uh, but we have uh, okay no I won't say that Yes, quite a few people are now getting it right. Yes, <laughs> Ash has got it right as well. Maria, Maria said you should name it the Tomek game. <laughs> yeah. Well, other people are getting it right. As Beatrice well. has got it right yes. as well. Well done, Beatrice. And the answer is, Mr. Duncan. Here comes the answer. Are you ready? Yes, Mr. Mr. Cockrell. Mr. Cockrell is going to say hello right now. <laughs> He has crowed. One Cock day he will crow his last. Yes. <laughs> Won't we all? Here we go then. The answer to the first and probably last sentence game for today <laughs> is Bing. Oh. Yes. Well done to those who got it right. Expect the unexpected, and you will never be surprised. You see? So if you always expect things that you don't expect then you will never be shocked or surprised by those things after they occur you why is that a hot topic well there are lots of surprises taking place at the moment in the world there, there always seems to be something new there's new news news things that are happening suddenly things happen and you're not expecting it like going into lockdown from next Thursday you see so a lot of people didn't think that was going to happen. So now they're very shocked and surprised, you see. So always expect the unexpected and you will never be surprised. Tomek says, please don't accuse me of wrongdoing. I'm not <laughs> cheating. No. We believe you. It's we all. Believe you. Yes. We where, where are you joking? But you are clever. <laughs> cleverer than me and I, I see I I don't see these Mr Duncan constructs these uh, before the live stream and I don't see them beforehand and uh, you always get them faster than me oh, we've got 10 minutes uh, we've still got 10 because we've still got 13 minutes so somebody we've... said that Cher Chernobyl is, is is quite a tourist attraction now it is uh, so it's not really a ghost town because no. lots of people are going there. Can you believe that? There are people now that go on on trips. They will go on holiday and they will visit 
the site uh, and, and also the area where the Chernobyl explosion took place way back in the 1980s. Wasn't that in 1989 as well? It was definitely in the 80s because I remember... Uh, Late 80s, wasn't it? Or was it 70s? When was no, it? it was definitely the 80s. But I always thought, yes, wasn't it 80, 88 or 89? I always think it was that year. Anyway, it probably wasn't. I know I said this before in the past and I know I was wrong. So here we go. Another sentence game, Steve. We, we are digressing as usual. Are you ready? Here it comes. Today's second sentence game. Oh, <laughs> we are not something three word three letters of the something five letters yet. Mm. We, we are, are not, not something of the something yet. Yes. So this again oh. might might be very good for for a hot topic. Can you think of which hot topic this might be referring to? We are not something. We are not something. Of the something yet. We are not something of the something yet. It was 1986. 86. OK, then I don't know why I said 89. 26th of April. Oh, my goodness. That's very precise. That's mm. very precise. But yes, there are tourists. The tourist industry is now allowing people to go and visit the, uh, the Chernobyl site. Well, probably not now, though. I yes, imagine at the uh, moment it's not happening. I think I, the whole the whole planet is like Chernobyl at the moment. Uh, Tomek's got it again. <laughs> Interesting thing about uh, Chernobyl. I saw a program about that. OK. A uh, number of years ago and the number of deaths that occurred due to the radiation <sighs> was far, far less than was expected. OK. Everybody thought that there would be just thousands of deaths. But according to the programme I watched, there were nowhere near as many deaths uh, as, were, as were expected. And they now think that the human body can withstand radiation like that a lot better than the, the we originally thought. Mm. And we but shouldn't be as scared of it as, as, as we have been. I still don't recommend it. No. Those isotopes... You wouldn't want to expose yourself unnecessarily. You don't want those isotopes getting into your bloodstream. You really don't. Uh, but maybe not as... Because that's the thing that everyone is really scared about. I mean, when we were growing up, radiation. That's the nuclear bombs, okay. uh, power stations blowing up. Okay. Everyone was scared. There, wow. there was a... There was a there was a film, was it about Three Mile Island, wasn't there? Because uh -huh. the, uh, one of the in America, they've got a, they've got a, um, an atomic power station or did have on Three Mile Island. Yeah. And that went wrong. But really that was it. the 1970s. Yes, I know. But I'm just saying that it's like a really scary thing. Mm. But I, th is. I think we don't have to be as scared of radiation as we think. It's not a death sentence. Low levels, not but, necessarily, apparently. You know, but it might be a bit annoying when you're trying to get to sleep at night and you're glowing green in the dark and your partner next to you is trying to get to sleep. And yet there you are. Fukushima. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> Fukushima yourself. <laughs> Fukushima oh, in okay. Japan. Obviously, that was uh, there was another problem with a power station there. <laughs> When they had an earthquake, I think it was, wasn't it? <laughs> no need for that type of language. Uh, uh, it's probably also a ghost town. Yes, I think that was quite serious uh, as well. Uh, I'd like to see the the, the, the film Chernobyl. OK. Uh, because... Uh, it's a programme. It's a programme. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see it's it. A, it's in about 13 parts. Is that the one that was on... Was it on Netflix last year? I think it was, wasn't it? I'd like to see it because a lot of a lot of people that uh, worked at the facility and a lot of rescue workers uh, lost their lives um, trying to protect the area around. They had to go into that fierce radiation mm. and uh, sacrifice their lives so, to so, protect others. So not not quite as is safe. <laughs> well, it's not safe if you if you get lethal doses. Yeah. But if you get Low level, but not lethal doses. It's mm -hmm. not as bad for you okay. as uh, was originally thought. So, apparently, a, a little uh, bit of radiation 
<laughs> well, because if you go up in an aeroplane, okay. you get quite a high dose of, of, of cosmic radiation. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I, I think that's equivalent. That, that's a high, quite a high dose you get when you go up in a Isn't plane. Isn't it like having 20 x-rays? Something like that, it is, yes. If you go up in an aeroplane, it's like it's the equivalent of having an x-ray taken of your body about... I think it's 10 or 20 times. I don't know if that's correct, it's but not, I know it's yes. quite a lot. Yes. It's around about there. It's around, around there. Anyway, we've got the answer. Tomek got it. Yes, a lot of people have, though. Yes, they have. <laughs> Tomek was first. Uh, Shall I give the answer? Sort of almost, we, we almost want... Uh, maybe, let's assume, Tomek, that you will always get it. Here we go. Here's a good idea. For the next one, we'll do one more... Tomek, can I just ask you nicely? Don't even if you know what it is, <laughs> if you know what the answer is, just 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 hold back for a moment. We know you're clever. We know you're clever. We know you've got it. Let's assume you know. that you always get yeah. it first. Yeah. But it's sort of ruining the sentence. I imagine I imagine Tomek's <laughs> brain is like like that, you see. Well, that's a go on, Mr. Duncan. Quick, put the answer up. Where's me cock? Oh, there it is. What? Faster. Okay. We are not. My, I, I can only have my my fingers moving at a certain speed. You need some kind of assistant. Bing. There we go. We are not out of the woods yet which means we are not out of danger. We are yes. not, we have not fully recovered from the situation. I just realised it's going quite dark outside. <laughs> it is. Isn't it strange? It's it going... shouldn't be because it doesn't get dark at all. Well, it's already quarter past four. I know, but... You but know. it gets dark now at half past four, so oh. it's dark, <laughs> as Mr Steve once said. Bye, so, Maria. See you, Maria. Bye. We are not out of the woods yet. Uh, is the well, Adam says we are not out of the water yet. Hmm. But I think that doesn't really work. I here. don't think it's an expression. I mean, the, 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 the word fits. But when you're out of the woods, it means you're out of danger. Because if you go into woods, normally that's a dangerous place to be, wild animals. So you could say in terms of coronavirus, we are not out of the woods yet. Definitely. Because we're in another lockdown. From next Thursday... England is going back into lockdown. But the big question is, will I be doing some special live streams? I don't know yet. Will you? I haven't decided. Shall I go and uh, put the, uh, the kettle on, Mr Duncan? Uh, if it will fit on your head, yes. You can put it on. <laughs> I meant to put the kettle on. Do you want a tea cake? Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. Or are you full up from the uh, the scones? I still have I still have the cheese scone in my stomach. But the thing is, if we we can have them tomorrow. Okay, one more sentence game. We're, we're going in five minutes. Okay, okay. I'm getting bored, but anyway, I'm only joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. You can go if you want. I'm joking. I'm going to stay to the bitter end. Okay. If you say you're staying to the bitter end, you're not really selling this very well. It means that you're staying. Right into the end of something, even though it's unpleasant. Even as a joke, you should never say you're bored. If you're at a party and it's... What's that noise? It's nothing. If you're at a party and it's... That is not nothing, Mr Duncan. Well, it's, it's, it's all right. It was like a, a sound of an explosion no, outside. It's, it's just something moving. Somebody you hear that? OK. Yes, if you say you stay to the bitter end, okay. you're at a party, it's boring, yeah. uh, but you don't want to upset the host. Uh, a friend might say, oh, come on, let's go, this party's boring. And you might say, oh, no, I'm going to stay to the bitter end. Okay. It means you stay right to the end and you're not enjoying it. OK, good. Good. Whew. Sentence game. Here's another one. This is the final one. <laughs> Hot topic, you see. Hot topic. So... He isn't something to something the something. And don't forget, we're not picking any particular person here. So when we say he, it could be anyone. 
so we know you've already got it tomic we know that so tomic just you are the winner you are the winner congratulations well done but but just uh, give keep, someone else a just, chance just keep it the keep, phrase that comes to mind all we please. are saying is please give others a chance to answer the sentence game Whew. just this once Gislaine hello Gislaine a big hello from Morocco hello Morocco it is raining at the moment the rain has just fa started falling look outside it's it's just oh my goodness the, there it is here is the view outside the window right now <laughs> look at I, that no wonder it's gone dark suddenly look at that it's horrible that must have been thunder we heard Mr Duncan I think it's some, it thunder. No, it's someone moving something around outside. Let's hope they're not stealing anything from us. <laughs> We've got nothing to steal, Steve. So isn't he isn't something eight letters beginning with E yeah. to something with three letters. The something with eight letters. OK. He isn't something to something the something. OK. I don't need to say that really, do I? No. Uh, that did go on for quite a while we have three minutes and then we are out of here we are going in a few moments he isn't some he isn't something to something the something and it's topical yes so we know you've got it Tomek and they're, 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 to Tomek is is resisting we know you've got it right you yes. are the winner he isn't something to something the something hot topic. So think of something that is hot, a topic that everyone is talking about or many people are talking about. Mr. Steve. Mm. Hot topic. <laughs> we have no answers yet, oh. Mr. Duncan. Well, someone uh, Integra Integra. You have one of the words. Yes, ah. one of them. Integra, well done. Congratulations. Bidding. Ooh. Valentin, enforced. Enforced. He isn't enforced to something sparring. So the middle word is is win. I hmm. can say that. Then. I think we can safely say the Integra. middle word. The middle word is win. Oh, we might need to ask Tomic to tell us in a minute. <laughs> we, 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 might <laughs> we might actually need Tomic to come back. Tomic is sitting there at the moment with his fingers just <laughs> over the keyboard, waiting to type. His fingers are are, are aching to Thinking, type. What a load of losers! They can't get this. I got it straight away. What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. Tomic's thinking, oh, oh, I got it. I got it instantly. What's the matter, Mr. Duncan? I'm just joking. <laughs> ah, riser. He isn't. Yes. Riser. Yes. Two of the words now. Two. So we've got one more. So the final word. Come on, Tomic, we'll let you. We'll let you get the last word. Actually, I think I'm sure that's wrong, that last one. That last word. I'm sure it's wrong. Have you got it wrong, Mr. Duncan? Yes, that should actually be S. Uh, sorry, E there. The last word is E. E. Yes. I don't know how I've done that, but there's the wrong letter there. That should be E. It's an E. I've only just noticed. I'm sorry about that. That's he my isn't mistake. expected to win the Yes, I think that makes it more. That makes it more easy. No wonder we haven't got. Yes, sorry about that. That's my fault. Not even Tomek's got that. Shall we just? <laughs> shall we just get Mr. Cockerell to put us all out of our misery? Well, if it is an E, let's see if someone can get it. It's an E. 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 Eight letters beginning with E. E. So. Tomek says he's having his soup. Oh, very so, nice. So uh, his hands are quite busy. I could hear the slurping. <laughs> Oh, what sort of soup are you having, Tomek? Mm. Is it alphabet soup? <laughs> That's a joke because we're dealing with with letters. Is it alphabet soup? Alphabet soup. Don't you know what that is? It's soup I, that children have that's yeah. got 
made of pasta and all the the letters are in the soup yes what the letters of the alphabet the letters of the alphabet are in the yeah. soup alphabet soup That's, um, it's a joke I, I thought that was quite a good joke it was a good joke <laughs> because we're all we're doing dealing with letters here maybe maybe tomic's uh, eating alphabet soup and he's taking the the, the little <laughs> the little letters out and he's forming them into the words that fit into the sentence yes. game or maybe he's, he's he's putting them into the into a swear words drop my pen I didn't think I'd be able to get well, that, back up then. That was a fascinating moment. E. So it's Isn't e. expected to win the... So it's not it's not S, it's E. Oh, shall we just have the answer? I feel so ashamed. I'm oh, at... someone's got it. Oh. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline. Oh, no, Adam got it. Adam got it first. OK. Daisy got it. Oh, Daisy got Vitas it. Vitas got it. Please make up your mind, Steve. Vitas was the first. No, Vitas. OK, then. Rele Sergio says, release Tomic. Tomic's having his soup. <laughs> oh, no, Valentin got it. Valentin was first uh, to get it. Valentin. Zo 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 says, I'm a Filipina <laughs> and I love German hot dog and English cake. Tomic said, what a lame joke. Do you like German hot dogs? Uh, yeah, I oh, wouldn't say no. Aren't they called Wursts? A Wurst? I'm not sure. Yes, a German German sausage. They're they're very <laughs> they're thick and long. Frankfurters. Yes, but they call them they call them Wursts. I think it's spelt W U R S T, but it's pronounced Wurst. Wurst. But certainly. Um, Frankfurt is Hassith. Bye, Mr. Duncan. I have to go. I will watch you tomorrow. A big hello from Sri Lanka. Catch you later, Hassith. And we are about to go anyway. That was a hot topic because it's to do with the American election. Yes. Hmm. Wurst. Yes, because W's in German are pronounced like V's in English. Yes, that's it. Oh, I was right. <laughs> it, it had to happen eventually. I had to be right about something one day. Here we go. The answer to th the final sentence game is bing, bong, expected to win the election. He isn't expected to win the election, you see. He isn't expected to win the election. Now, that's not making any judgment or anything. That's just today's final sentence game. Sorry about that. I got that last word wrong. I put S instead of E. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes my concentration vanishes into thin air. But we got there in the end. Talking of which, we are about to disappear into thin air, as Shakespeare once said. So we will be going and we will be back with you next Sunday together. However, as I've mentioned already today, we are going into lockdown again here in England. Many people now being told that they will have to stay at home from Thursday. So we will see what happens. One last little thing. Marietta says, is suffrage an English word meaning the same as election? Suffrage. No, no. suffrage is normally something you do as a way of giving yourself pain or discomfort over another thing or a certain thing, such as I suppose a good example would be the suffragette movement where women would would actually put their lives at risk or sometimes give their lives so the the government would change their minds about uh, giving women the vote yes. so this is something that was around i think over a hundred years ago there were suffragettes and they were women who would put their lives at risk and they believed so strongly in women having the vote that they would put their self at risk. Well, I'm, 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 I, I, of course, every week on this show. Oh, OK. Uh, I'm putting myself through suffrage, Mr. Duncan, yes. by being on live with you. It just means to suffer. It isn't that bad. I'm only joking. Anyway, we're going now. Bye bye. I shall go first, as always. And I'll go and put the kettle on. Yes. And uh, I, have you definitely decided you don't want a tea cake? No tea cake, thank you, no because I've still got your your big scone in my tummy. Tatar, everyone. 
to use a well-known expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully see you all next week. Uh, we won't know the outcome of the election. It's highly unlikely. I don't think we'll definitely know for at least a month, apparently. Well, no, uh, I think it'll be Wednesday. <laughs> no, I don't think we know straight away, do we? Because they can't count them up that quickly. Yes, I think it's... I don't think we know. No, I think you get the result quite quickly. Oh, I thought yeah. I thought there's a possibility that we might not get the result no, for some time. We'll see what happens anyway. But I think I think on the night when they're counting the votes, I think they normally have a good idea. They they can tell roughly who who is going to win. Anyway, ta ta. See you next week and see you in a few minutes. Yes, in Bye. in in the kitchen. Are you going to fade me out or do I need to just walk? Shall on? I just shall I just sort of ease you off? Like this. There oh. he goes. Mr. Steve has left the studio <laughs> and I am going to leave YouTube right now. Thanks for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a little bit different. <laughs> Palmyra says the letter was S. What a sham you made. Yes, I'm sorry about that. That's my mistake. If I make a mistake, I will always put my hand up and say, I made a mistake. I got it wrong. I'm only human after all. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. Thanks for your lovely messages. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for your congratulations on my YouTube channel's birthday yesterday. There is a new lesson on my YouTube channel all about Halloween. I will be back with you next Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. And that is that is that, as they say. Thanks for watching. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you stay happy and healthy. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Take care because I care. It's true. And of course, you know what's coming next. <sighs> Ta-ta for now.